Hey everyone, Ben here from 4 Drive in Australia. This is just a really quick video for all the crew in the USA who purchase a 4 Drive directly off our website. Uh, so when you do jump on and purchase a 4 Drive, we'll ship it out to you using FedEx. And when it arrives in the US, the USA customs need to know who's purchasing this product and who's bringing it into your country in the US. So the, the one form that they send out to you is called a 5106 form, and this will come from FedEx. Uh, they do that all on behalf of USA Customs. So a couple of days after you get the tracking number from us, uh, you should get an email from FedEx with all this information. They sometimes use a DocuSign, sometimes just send you the PDF. Um, make sure you check your spam and junk folders as well, and make sure that the email address you use when you actually purchase the unit off us is one that you have access to and that you monitor. Same with your mobile number, uh, very important. So. Um, a really good customer of ours, Paul, over in California, he uh, reached out to me and said, look, this form is a little bit confusing, I've never dealt with it before, and I'm sure there's other people that have had the same, uh, you know, same questions about the form. So he's very graciously uh, made us an awesome video, and he runs right through the form, telling you everything you need to know and how you can fill it out um, as a company or as an individual. This form is nothing unusual, nothing out of the ordinary. It's a USA customs form. Uh, it's needed because of the value of the item um, and when you bring it into the country uh, they just got to know who it is so nothing untoward um, in two years of shipping these things over to the US we've never had somebody not get their product or it gets sent back to us or anything like that so it's nothing to be overly concerned about it is just a form that you have to fill out and get back to, to FedEx FedEx can be you know they're a big carrier uh, they can be a bit hard to get hold of so um, you know please be patient with that or be prepared for that um, complete the DocuSign follow the instructions that Paul's got coming up in this video. And um, yeah, you shouldn't have too many issues, but be rest assured you will get your foil drive. You do just need to fill out this form. So as I said, only for USA customers and direct sales from our website. So if you purchase one at one of our dealers in the US, you won't have to worry about that. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Yeah, if you have any questions, as always reach out to support at foildrive.com and we can help you out with it. But we don't get any visibility over this process and can't help this process along. It's a process between yourself as the importer and FedEx on behalf of USA Customs. So yeah, I'll leave it to Paul, cheers. So if you're tracking your package from FedEx, the very first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a delayed message. They'll update you with that. And then shortly thereafter, you'll get, a, you'll get an email from FedEx. And here's just a quick copy of what the email looks like. Really nothing here of note other than um, it's your point of contact at FedEx. That's the most take that's the biggest takeaway from this email. So now you've got this email and right after you get that email, you'll get a second email from FedEx where they send you a DocuSign. And the DocuSign is pretty straightforward. You're going to click on the review document and that's where things get difficult. It's going to take you to the form 5106 that needs to be filled out and we're going to go through that right now for you. So now, you're good, now you've clicked on your DocuSign and you just get a standard fill outable form. And as you're going to see here, it's called an importer identity form. And I think really the takeaway from this is we're not, when we're buying this, we're the importer and FOIL drives the exporter. So again, it's our responsibility to fill out this form. FOIL drive doesn't know what's going on with this form. Um, okay, so most of the form is pretty straightforward. It's just there's a lot here, and this is really more of an instance of what not to fill out versus what to fill out. Also, another thing of note is I'm doing this form as an individual and not a business. There's a lot of fields that if you were a business that would need to be filled out that I'm just not going to know. This might be a little bit useful to you as a business, but this video is an individual filling out this form. All right, so here we go with the form. The very first thing you need to do is right here, type of action. Simply click notice of identification number, real simple. Uh, you need to fill out box 1A, that's just your name. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, assuming you're an individual, you now need to list your social security number. Okay, um, again, pretty straightforward. Where it starts to get confusing is all this other stuff that you don't know what to do with. And again, if you fill this out wrong, they're, not, they're gonna kick it back and you're never gonna get anywhere with your shipment. So, box 1C and box 1D, you do not do anything with those. Box 1E, right over here, none of that needs to be done. Box 1F, you don't need to do anything with that.
Now, box 1H, you do need to put something here. Um, I'm going to assume that if you're an individual like me, you're going to put what I did, which is I do not intend to import, but whatever works for you there. Um, also, we got box 1I, which is important. You need to put importer of record. And then again, this is really an issue of what not to fill out. Um, nothing gets done for box 1J through 1M. You don't do anything there. Uh, once you get into 2A, you do fill all this out. It's very self-explanatory. Address here, city here, state, zip. You do not need a country ISO code. That was one of the confusing things for me. So you leave that blank. Then you'll come, over, you'll come down here. Uh, you know, you'll fill in the appropriate box. In my case, it was a residence. So 2B is just, uh, is just if you have a different mailing address. So, you know, most people won't have to fill that out. If you do, it's all self-explanatory. Again, 2C, 2C, put in a phone number if you have it, include an extension, fax, uh, fax number if you have it. Fill that in, pretty self-explanatory. 2E is very important. You do need to put your email address. And you do not need to list anything for a website. Okay. Again, once we get past this, it's what not to fill out. Um, since you are not a company, you do not need to fill out anything. In all of Section 3, which is right here, all the way down to all the way down to section four so you skip that entire section section four self-explanatory you're going to put your name telephone number date Mo I, I can't imagine an instance where you would have a broker so at, at least if you're like me and you just bought it to use yourself you will leave this blank and you'll leave the telephone number for the broker blank You'll sign this, and then um, you'll hit the uh, accept on DocuSign, and you're done. So this is what I did. Now, I thought I was actually done. And what happened, at least in my instance, and you, you may get luckier than I did, but what happened to me was FedEx never received my DocuSign. So I had to start the process all over again, and, you know, it's a bit of a pain to redo it. But so what I would recommend is go through this, do the DocuSign, but in addition to that, I recommend that you print it out and you save the PDF. And one thing to keep in mind when you print it out, section 1B here, your social security number is going to look redacted. They're going to they're going to, you know, obviously hide it so people don't see it. So when you print it out, I would suggest um, widen it out and write it in your social security number and then take take the PDF of this form and that original email that you had from FedEx with the contact person I also suggest taking and manually emailing her a copy of this form. That way, in case the DocuSign is not received, like what happened in my case, you're not going to delay getting the shipment released, and that way you get your foil drive. So after you send them the form 5106, normally that same day, worst case, probably the following day, you'll get a notification and possibly an email from FedEx letting them know that your shipment has been released and you are good to go.